joining basketball teams when you were small. So I'm curious about if you weren't, you weren't a scientist, what would you have been? Well, at the time, there's no professional baseball league in Taiwan. <laughs> so <laughs> if there was a professional baseball league, I might consider playing baseball. <laughs> I was very good at playing baseball at the time. But actually, science is more exciting. But at the end of the sixth grade, entering the junior high school, everybody wrote biography, autobiography. At the time, I already mentioned that I wanted, wanted to be a scientist. So my teacher was very impressed that the, the young boy knew what he wanted to do. What do you want to say to us, the ASC members? Be a young student like you. One need to dare to be different. Einstein was talking about conformity. In Asian country, we are asked to follow the rules, follow the other people. Uniformity, conformity is a rule. But one need to dare to be different. If you want to be creative, you have to dare to be different. You have to be rebellious. Many parents didn't like to hear what I said. I said, when I was young, I was very rebellious, and I don't believe in what, whatever going on. So I want to find a better way, a new way, new social order, and all of those kind of things. So one needs to be there to be different. Of course, you want to be creative, you have to have confidence. If you don't have confidence, you don't, we are not there to be different. And confidence will build up if you accumulate some success. So I always try to tell school teachers, no matter what the level of students are, we should create the opportunity for them to become successful. When you make a little step become successful, then you gain the confidence. So school should be the place for students to gain confidence. And that means that they want to be successful. You make the step bigger for very able student, the step will be smaller for average student. But anyway, so those are the two comments I want to make. You really have to be there to be different. What was the feeling to be the first Taiwanese to receive the Nobel Prize? Well, actually, um, we are many different kinds of scientists. Some of the scientists will seek the fame, and so they always try to to see whether they will get some prizes or not. But I'm a little different. <laughs> I enjoy working with students and knowing that we are doing the best in the world. That's very satisfactory to know that the people are looking at us and try to see what we found. So I didn't expect that I received a Nobel Prize. That's really not important for me. Important for me is to work with students and bring them up, they are creative, we can do the best in the world. And then gradually people recognize me, recognize our work together and give me prizes. And those are the things follow you, follow, follow your good work. I thought you would tell me that the hardest point is to come to a, to a, a dead end. And it's not like this. Well, yes. Everybody will have some difficulty, and I mentioned a little earlier, one has to have a habit. Not every day you examine what you have done today, and if you have difficulty, what are you going to do tomorrow? Which direction you are going to move on tomorrow? Every week we have to examine yourself and decide what to move. Very often I have students who are doing experiment until midnight, Experiment didn't work. We all went, went, went home. I would not be able to go to sleep until I find a way tomorrow how to do it right. Many of my students will come the next morning. He said, Professor Lee, experiment didn't work because we made a mistake. We should do this. We tried to try this. And I know those students are very hopeful. Sometimes I will see students you come the next morning and say, Professor Lee, didn't work, what should I do? That's not good. How would you define science? Science is a method 
or language to communicate with nature, science, you have to learn to observe and deduce what's going on, came to some conclusion. And so sometimes students learn lots of science, but they are not scientific. They always memorize a lot of things. Sometimes you see the lawyer and historian, anthropologist, and these scientists, the way they sometimes historian could deduce what's going on. They are much more scientific than so-called science. <laughs>